Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at texturizing with texture brushes in Procreate. As usual, I'm using a couple of Design Cuts assets. The images themselves are coming from the Wild Flora Wonders Floral Vectors pack. There are PNG images in that pack and I'm using those. And the brushes, the texture brushes, are Magic Noise brushes for Procreate. So let's swing across now to Procreate. I've already got my assets in place. So I'm going to select the image that we'll be working with and I've just put my ping image on a layer by itself. So I'm going to add a new layer and my texture is going on this new layer. There are lots of ways to put texture in images in Procreate and we're going to have a look at a few of those in this tutorial. For the texture color, I'm going to sample the color from the flower. So I'll just press and hold my finger on the flower to sample that color. I'll open up the colors panel and go to the value area where I can use the HSB values just to darken that color. So I'm going to be texturing with the exact same color as the flower is using. Make sure I have my new layer selected and let's go and select the brush to use. Well, I'm using the particles brush here from the Magic Noise brush collection. It's all included in its own folder inside the library here and I'm using particles. So let's just go and make the brush as large as we can. I'm going to use quite a high opacity on this brush and I'm just going to brush it over the flower area around the edge where I want the texture to appear. You can see that I'm not making the world's greatest job of being careful where this texture is going because I don't need to. All I'm concerned about is getting the texture where I want it on the flower and not with anything that is going outside the flower because it's very easy to get rid of that in a minute. So once you've got your texture where you want it to be, it's time to remove it from where you don't want it to be. So I'm going to the Layers panel, I'm going to select the Flower Layer and then I'll go to the Selection tool and tap it. It's set to Automatic, so if I now tap on the flower itself, I will select it. And I'm also going to select the inside part of the flower. These are the areas where I want the texture to be. So what I need to do now is to invert this selection using the Invert option down here at the bottom of the screen to select now everywhere where I don't want the texture to be. That's still selected, so let's go back to the Layers panel and let's tap on the area where I painted the texture in. By tapping now on the Layer thumbnail, I get access to the commands that I can use with this layer and I'm just going to tap Clear. And that clears the texture away from the area where I didn't want it to be. So that's our first method of applying a texture to a element. This time I'm going to work with the leaves. So I'm going to put this on a brand new layer. Let's go this time and use grey as our colour. And I'll explain to you in a minute why we're using grey. I've got a new layer for my texture, but I do this time want to select the green area so that this time I will limit my paintwork to the green area. So let's go and select the flower. Let's go back to our selection tool and I'm going to tap on the green area. Now, if I don't get exactly what I want, I'm going to pull back so that the selection threshold is reduced. Now that's not working for me right now. Let's just tap clear and let's see if we can tap on just the leaves and get them selected. Reducing the selection threshold has given me a better chance of making the selection I want. And since these are solid colors, they should be fairly easy to select. Let's go back to the layers palette. Let's tap to set focus to the layer where we want to put our texture. And you'll see in the background as you work that you've got some lines showing and that's telling you that you've got a selection in place. Everything that is not covered by those diagonal lines is accessible to you to paint. And so I've got my gray color. Now I'm going to add my texture around the edges of the leaves. This is a gray texture. But because I've got a selection in place, this time the only place where the texture is going is where I have got the selection in place. And so that's limiting the area where the paint can go. Once I'm done, I'll just click the selection tool again to disable the selection. One of the benefits of using grey for a texture is that you can blend it into the layer beneath using a blend mode. And the colour of the texture, because it's grey, will work with any colour leaves. 
So let's just go to our texture layer. I'm going to tap on the letter N, which is set to normal blend mode, but I'm going to use a different blend mode. And Color Burn is quite a good blend mode. It blends the colors in really nicely, but you can also try things like Linear Burn and Multiply. I just happen to like Color Burn better. So having done that, and blended the texture in, if we decide to change the color of the leaves later on, then the texture is going to change color too. So let's just see how we would do that. Let's do that with a hue saturation adjustment. I want to use hue saturation adjustment because I'm going to change the leaves as well as the flower and you're going to see how the leaves, the texture on the leaves works better than the texture on the flower. The texture on the leaves is just adapting to any color that the leaves happen to be. But the texture on the flower is a real problem because it's still that red color and the flower changes color, the texture doesn't. So sometimes you might find it more appropriate to use gray as your texture, use a blend mode to blend it in. And then if you change your element, change the color of your element, it's going to be a whole lot more robust because the texture is going to blend in perfectly regardless of what color you happen to change your element to be. It's also possible when you're texturing to work directly on the element that you want to texture. I've sampled the color of the flower already. I'm going to work with a slightly darker version of this color as I did earlier. But this time I want to texture directly onto the flower. If I want to limit my texture to that flower area, which would be a smart method of working, I'm going to the Layers palette and I'm going to tap on the Layer thumbnail. If I select Alpha Lock, then what I'm doing is locking the pixels on this layer. So the only place where my paint can go down is where there's actually already content on this layer. So we're effectively making a selection of this layer and painting only within that selected area. So I've got my brush here. I think this time I'll use the Funny Noise brush. And now as I paint around the edge of the flower to add a bit of texture to it, you'll see that the paint is only going where the flower is, even though I'm painting halfway across the background, the texture is being limited to just the area that the flower consumes. And of course, that would be the same with the leaf. Of course, the issue with this brush is that it's going over the green area of the flower and it's bringing some color with it. So let's just undo that and see if we can solve the problem of texturizing the entire flower with this brush with the knowledge that we've gathered from the previous example where we used a blend mode. So in this case, I'm going to select gray as my color instead of that dark red. And I'm going to the brush that I'm using, which is this funny noise brush, and I'm going to tap on it. And I'm going to the general area of the brush to the blend mode option because here we can actually specify the blend mode that we want to use with this particular brush. So I'm going to the darken blend modes and I'm going to tap on color burn. And now I'm going to paint over the edges of the flower. And this time the brush is working in color burn blend mode. And because it's gray, I'm able to brush onto the flower. And it doesn't matter where on the flower I'm painting, on green or on red, because the blend mode is turning the gray brush into a effectively a color brush, which is appropriate to the area that I'm coloring over. So sometimes changing the blend mode of a brush will give you an effect that you want. And particularly if you want to be able to paint on the layer itself, the alpha lock method is a way of doing that. Combine that with a brush that has its blend mode set to whatever is appropriate for the task that you're doing. I have open here another document that has one of these Wild Flora Wonders elements on it. The image is on a layer separate to the background and it's a transparent layer so it doesn't have any background with it. Another method for using these noise brushes as texture is to use them with the eraser. So I'm making sure that I've got my layer selected. I'm going to the eraser. And we'll set the eraser to one of the magic noise brushes. In this case, I'm using the particles brush. I'm going to set it to a large size and a reasonable sort of opacity. 
check that I'm using the eraser and then I'm going to start erasing a little bit of the flower to add a little bit of texture to it. If I want to limit the erasing to only the flowers, I can do that. We'll go to the selection tool. I'm going to tap on the flowers to select them, leaving unselected the stems that I don't want to erase from. And so now I'll go back to my eraser and as I erase, you'll see that the erasing is only taking place on the flowers. So the texture is only being applied to the flowers and not to the stem. So a similar sort of process in making a selection of the area that you want to affect can be used with the eraser and with these noise brushes or any texture brush here in Procreate. Once you've achieved the effect that you're looking for, tap the selection tool to go back to working in the entire document. So this is an idea of the kind of range of tools that you can use with noise or texture brushes in Procreate. It's not exhaustive, but these are some of the key options that you can consider as you're looking to add texture to your art. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Procreate techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.